Hi, I'm Marshall Brown. Welcome to season two of Water Matters. In season one, we had nine great guests, scientists and environmental leaders from across Long Island. All these interviews are available at liwater.org. Just click on Water Matters on the upper right and you can stream all the episodes. Water Matters' mission is to educate Long Islanders as to the water problems we face so that we can solve them. Schools across Long Island are now drawing from the seven hours of video we already have in our library. For season two, we will offer the public nine more reasons to watch. We all know that Long Island, in its present trajectory, is unsustainable. If we do nothing, all our bays, rivers, and ponds, all our fisheries and shell fisheries will be gone in 15 years. In addition, our drinking water quality will continue its alarming decline and we will drain what water we have left in our aquifer. If last season was about the theories, the explanations for why our bays, rivers, ponds, and drinking water are under great threat, this season will focus on what people are actually doing to address that today, whether planting or growing oysters, inventing new clean water technologies, or enacting policies we need to build a sustainable future for Long Island. Today on Water Matters, we are delighted to present a one-on-one -on -one interview with former Babylon Town Supervisor and now Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone. Our conversation was all about sustainability and ranged from issues of transportation to revitalizing downtowns and, of course, water. I started by asking County Executive Steve Ballone about sustainability and where he thinks the county will be in 15 years. Here's Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone. Well, uh, first of all, it's great to be with you uh, on you. the show. Uh, I really admire the work that uh, you're doing here. And the issue is so important, sustainability. You know, we live on an island, and, um, you know, we're as threatened by uh, some of the, you know, global phenomenon, climate change, uh, global warming that are occurring as any other region in the country or the world. Um, you know, we're a region of nearly three million people. Uh, that's larger than 22 states in the country. Yeah, you know, and again, we're an island. So um, sustainability is absolutely critical uh, to us. We have incredible assets in this region, things that, that you know, other regions of the country would just, you know, kill to have. And yet there are mounting problems with, with traffic, with water quality, with air quality, um, you know, quality of life issues, environmental issues that threaten to overwhelm all of the, the amazing things about this place that make it such a, a wonderful place to be. And so uh, what we need to focus on, what we need to, to think about is how we um, carve out a place where we are uh, creating sustainable economic growth in, in a way that is uh, attractive and will help bring uh, young people to the region that is sustainable while that sustainable element protecting all of the things that are precious about our region. And actually, not only protecting, but reversing a lot of the declines that we've seen um, over the last several decades. Mm. Well, it, it's, um, uh, it's a big challenge because yes. if, you take, if you take Nassau <laughs> and Suffolk and put them together, yeah. it would be the fourth most densely populated country in the world. Uh, yeah. Yet, uh, I mean, we, we can talk about uh, our wastewater issue now. We've got, uh, what, uh, 360,000 cesspools and septic tanks yeah. sitting in sandy soil in yeah. Suffolk County alone. Yeah. Now, you, your uh, administration has targeted 209,000 to be replaced, yeah. the yeah. ones in low-lying areas. There is probably uh, very few places in the world that have this dense of a population um, that is on septics and sewers sitting above a sole source aquifer, mm. uh, you know, in a place in an island that is just um, it has bays and rivers and streams throughout it, mm. uh, you know. So uh, it is a huge challenge. 360,000 homes on sewer, that's uh, more than the entire state of New Jersey has just in Suffolk County alone. So it mm -hmm. is an enormous challenge. Uh, but it, it is absolutely vital to the future of our, of our island mm -hmm. that we tackle this problem and that, that we not wait any longer for someone else to say, you know, or, you know come in and, and solve the problem for us. We have to uh, tackle this problem, uh, you know, boots up ourselves working to 
create partnerships at the levels of government, but not waiting for others to come in and solve the problem. The, the time to start reversing the decline is now, and you know that's what we've been working on in the mm -hmm. county with uh, so many great people and organizations. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the uh, sole source aquifer. Now that that's something that maybe a lot of people don't uh, quite realize. We live on top of our drinking water, <laughs> so yeah. anything that we throw uh, on the ground will eventually uh, seep down there or end up out there. So, uh, you know, for us to really tackle the, the, the uh, wastewater treatment uh, issue, people need to understand uh, both uh, the threat to the drinking water and what uh, the uh, excess nitrogen does to our uh, bays, rivers, and ponds. Yeah, that's right. You know, we have a tendency not to pay attention to things that we can't see, mm -hmm. right? That's probably human nature. So. Uh, we don't see the groundwater right, mm -hmm. that's beneath our feet, and we also don't see the septic systems and the cesspools mm -hmm. that are beneath the ground, so we don't pay much attention to what they're doing. And the fact of the matter is these are mechanical systems that have a certain lifespan uh, to them, and they, they break down, they malfunction, and we have 360,000 of them, so many of which are just sort of seeping, what you said, Marshall, this nitrogen into the ground and ultimately into our groundwater and into our surface waters. Mm -hmm. What we do see are those surface waters. And you know that I think I found to be a good way to communicate with people because there's a great attachment to um, our rivers and our bays and our streams because we understand that's our that's our quality of life here. That's our heritage. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, it's our economy, you know, in mm -hmm. so many ways, our tourism economy, $5.1 mm -hmm. billion industry is underpinned by all these surface waters. And we have absolutely decimated our surface waters over mm -hmm. the last several decades uh, with nitrogen pollution. And, and that's why getting at and the largest source of that is from these uh, old septic and, and cesspool systems that do nothing to treat for nitrogen. So we need to um, figure out how to solve that problem. That's what we've been working on uh, mm -hmm. in the county. Well, let's talk about the uh, clean water tech incubator at Stony Brook. I think that's a very exciting development. I think that can turn this problem into a solution if we start to build these systems here. Yeah. So, you know, like any, you know, complex problem, it's not going to be uh, solved with a simple Mm -hmm. uh, solution. You need a comprehensive solution. The uh, Clean Water Technology uh, Center at Stony Brook is uh, a, a great advance forward. Uh, we work closely with Governor Cuomo, uh, then Supervisor of Southampton, Anthony Holst, uh, and and many others to create this place that essentially is a incubator for new technology, new ideas around how we treat uh, wastewater, uh, because. One of the big things we need to do, I think, is to try to reduce the costs associated with uh, installing these advanced systems so that we are uh, making it practical, more practical for uh, the average homeowner to mm -hmm. be able to utilize these systems and therefore to allow us governmentally to be able to, to have these systems installed across and, and retrofit all these uh, homes that have been uh, out there. It also help us potentially to create an industry here that uh, we don't have right now, which is important as well, because sustainability is also economic sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're not going to be uh, sustainable and have the resources we need to make the investments we're talking about mm -hmm. if we don't have a, a vibrant economy as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's an important piece. And so creating an industry around uh, cleaning up our water or you know, other energy initiatives, other efficiency, sustainable initiatives, I think is important for Long Island. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's say 100,000 of these uh, cesspools and septic tanks are replaced by one of these on-site denitrification mm -hmm. systems. Uh, at, you know, throwing about 10,000 10, a pop, that's a that's billion dollars of investment right yeah, there. that's exactly right. So, uh, that's exactly I mean, th there, we, we need to think about um, being the being the very best at this, and yeah. and I've I've seen I've, I've gone there as you have, and um, the advances that they're making there are quite something. So very yeah, hopeful about it's that. It's an incredible place, and you know the numbers you cite. Yeah, this is a problem in the billions. You know, mm -hmm. not hundreds of millions. It's billions, and so government can't do that alone. We need to, and I've always believed this. We need to create an environment in which it starts to make sense for 
uh, people to do this on their own and to be able to do this on their own. Now, initially, that means, um, you know, of course, we need to be incubating new products and technologies. We also need to be uh, looking at the contractor base here to make sure that there are actually people who know to, to uh, mm. utilize these systems, work these systems, repair these systems, uh, so that homeowners who are installing them have somewhere to go. That's very important to make the program sustainable. Uh, and, and we need to be creating a program, and this is something we're working on, where we can, in the short term, where these systems are really expensive, and they mm -hmm. will be expensive for the people who are first putting them in, um, where basically you're giving people the ability to finance these systems mm -hmm. and also uh, assistance mm -hmm. with the system to bring down the cost. If you do those two things, provide some assistance and finance them over time, particularly mm -hmm. for the people who are doing it at first, you make, you make this doable. Mm -hmm. And that allows the contractor base to grow. It also allows assistance to be incubated mm -hmm. and, and the Center for Clean Water Technology to have places to be analyzing this. So all that needs to grow and develop together. And that's why putting a program together like that is vitally important to make sure that this works so mm -hmm. we can retrofit these homes. Well, you're absolutely right. We have to figure out how to uh, finance this. And, um, you know, we lost a year. Mm -hmm. um, we, we tried to get a, a referendum on the ballot and uh, Albany didn't allow us to ha yeah. have that happen. Yeah. So uh, I think part of um, our task is, is to really inform as many Long Islanders as possible uh, what's at stake and, and what absolutely needs to be done. Um, I thought that the um, uh, dollar uh, surcharge on uh, uh, every thousand gallons mm. it was, was a very reasonable proposal given that uh, our water rates are a buck 67 mm. uh, per thousand, which is maybe a third of what they're paying in New York City. Even with this charge, um, our water rates would still be 40% below the national uh, average. And really the question is, um, we know what the problem is. You know, we, we've identified it, we've studied it. If you, if you came into uh, our county offices, you could, see, you could stack studies up to here mm -hmm. uh, that have been done. So studying is important, but you know, action needs to take place at a certain mm -hmm. point. And we know the problem. So the question is, what are we prepared to do to solve this problem that threatens to undermine both our present and our future? Mm -hmm. And what we put forward, as, as you know, Marshall, we, we uh, worked together and talked about and uh, we thought it was very reasonable. Give people the right to decide here in Suffolk County whether they want to invest a little bit of money to uh, create a dedicated fund for water quality infrastructure, meaning mm -hmm. these funds can go only to improving water quality, improving mm -hmm. our, our bays and our rivers and our streams and protecting our groundwater. Mm -hmm. And uh, that $1 charge could you know, produce approximately $75 million a year. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're talking about a problem in the billions, All right. that's not gonna solve the problem uh, immediately overnight. But what it allows us to do is to immediately make progress mm -hmm. and to make progress every single year mm -hmm. and that's what needs to happen you know this problem didn't occur overnight it accumulated mm -hmm. over decades mm -hmm. we're not going to solve the problem overnight but what we need to do is make progress every single year mm -hmm. and we think that referendum would allow us to do that and that's why we're hopeful we're working with the state legislature you know uh, you know we put the proposal out together with all the stakeholders uh, late in the legislative uh, season you know we are um, you know, looking forward to working with them. We're working closely to try to address any concerns mm -hmm. that, that people may have. But um, I think at the end of the day, voters uh, should have the right to decide mm -hmm. whether they want to invest some of their own money to mm -hmm. protect mm -hmm. what is the most precious mm -hmm. resources we have on this island. Well, uh, you know, left, right, or center, we all care about where we're from. Right. Uh, and I, I saw that uh, recently at the uh, press conference in, in Sable where it was announced that uh, there would be a, a planning for sewering in West Sable, uh, Oakdale, and Sable. Yeah, yeah. We, um, you know, we uh, announced uh, with uh, Supervisor Angie Carpenter and Senator Tom Croce working with them uh, on this issue, but uh, basically announced uh, two separate uh, design projects that we want to get underway. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the, the planning was to try to get it into the capital budget for, for next year, but, you know, we pushed it up. We moved some things around mm -hmm. because we wanted to get those design going right now. So it would design uh, sewer line uh, from Oakdale all the way to Sayville mm -hmm. that would help, again, you know, that economic connection to the, to the environment connection, producing sustainability, allow uh, those downtowns to, to fully thrive and uh, at the same time form the foundation of what would be necessary to hook up those communities south of, of Montauk that are really uh, contributing to uh, the nitrogen pollution and the problems with uh, mm -hmm. you know, those septics and cesspools. So that and uh, sewer project around the airport, mm -hmm. you know, again, an economic development project that uh, would create economic development and jobs in the area where it's appropriate, right around that airport and that industrial area mm -hmm. as well. So those design projects are moving forward uh, right now. And what I want us to get to, where I want uh, the county to be, is I truly do believe that at some point our country is going to get back into the business of investing in our nation's infrastructure. You know, we're going through, uh, you know, what I view as this really crazy period in, in our country's area where we, where we don't have a bipartisan consensus on the importance in investing in things like roads and bridges and sewer infrastructure, water infrastructure. Um, and, you know, I've always viewed that as a temporary situation. I didn't know when it would change, but I'm hopeful it is starting to change now and and we're going to get to the point where the country is investing in that infrastructure and when that happens i want suffolk county to be in a place where we already have the programs going you know we have our mm -hmm. own fund here at the local level where we're moving projects forward we've designed a number of projects and now when that funding comes in from the from the federal government when we start investing in that infrastructure again we're ready. We're mm -hmm. shovel ready. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are now in a position to just mm -hmm. ramp up the projects we're already doing and, mm -hmm. and make even further advances. So that's, that's what I'm hoping for, to, that we can put ourselves in that position. We'll be right back with more of my interview with Steve Ballone right after these messages. If you get sick, your doctor may give you medicine, and you might have some left over when you get better. So what do you do with it? Here's what, don't ever, ever, like ever, flush drugs down the drain because we're beginning to find them in our water here on Long Island. See, whatever goes down the drain ends up in our drinking water or in our bays and streams. So jump in and help keep Long Island's water clean. Don't flush medicines down the drain. Learn more at liwater.org. If we're going to solve our water issues on Long Island, we'll need an informed public. Jump in print materials about water issues on Long Island can be co-branded with your organization's logo and are available at no cost to local nonprofits on Long Island and for minimal cost to local agencies and water departments. To learn more, please visit our website at liwater.org or call our office for more information. Let's spread the word about Long Island's water. People working on water issues on Long Island understand that we have a problem with nitrogen. It pollutes our bays and streams as well as our drinking water. Most excess nitrogen is coming from sewage systems, but there is another significant contributor, water-soluble, high-nitrogen lawn fertilizers. It's pretty ironic when you think about it. We're spending millions or even billions of dollars trying to reduce nitrogen levels in our water. And yet, every spring, consumers flock to the big box stores and the garden centers to buy huge bags of lawn fertilizer that contain high levels of synthetic nitrogen that dissolve in water, up to 40% in some cases. And making synthetic nitrogen fertilizer is dependent upon continued fossil fuel extraction, which is increasingly dependent upon fracking. But that's a whole other story. So we're paying to make the problem worse while we're paying to make it better. Hmm. Okay. High nitrogen lawn fertilizer, that is any product with a first number higher than 10 on the bag, can turn a suburban lawn bright green in just a matter of days. But a lot of that water-soluble nitrogen never gets to the grass plants. It drains right through the soil and ends up in our drinking water supply. Or it washes away with heavy rain and ends up in our streams, rivers, and bays. 
So how much does fertilizer contribute to our water problem? Estimates vary from 8% to 15% or even more in some areas. But here's the thing. This is the low-hanging fruit of Long Island's water issues. It's a problem that can be fixed right now, and it can have an immediate impact on the quality of our water, and it won't cost a dime. There are plenty of high-quality, low-nitrogen lawn fertilizers on the market today that contain water-insoluble nitrogen. This kind of nitrogen is broken down by microbes in the soil rather than water, so it stays where you put it and it nourishes your grass plants slowly over time rather than all at once. It's better for the plants and it's certainly better for our water. These are the fertilizer products we should be using on Long Island. Sometimes people need help making the right choices. Now, manufacturers are reluctant to change their formulas until there is a market for their products. That's why it's time for our elected representatives in Nassau and Suffolk counties, as well as in Albany, to pass legislation that prohibits the sale or use of any lawn fertilizer with more than 10% nitrogen and require that half of that nitrogen be water insoluble. Getting rid of high nitrogen fertilizers is not going to solve all of our water problems here on Long Island, but it is certainly a common sense first step that could make an immediate difference for us and future generations. I'm Patty Wood, and that's my soapbox. The views expressed on the soapbox are not necessarily those of Water Matters, its sponsors, hosts, guests, or underwriters. If you'd like to stand on the Water Matters soapbox and sound off about a water issue, send your script to soapbox at liwater.org. Welcome back to Water Matters. Our guest today is Suffolk County Supervisor Steve Blone. Here's more of our interview. You remember um, IBM Smarter Cities coming sure. in and helping us out? Uh, um, they were here for three weeks, we want a, a grant to, uh, to, to plan how we're going to uh, fix this issue. Uh, they concluded with uh, this one sentence, you have no choice. Um, so uh, that's, that's the stick, the carrot is where this could all go. Right, you know it's interesting, um, you have no choice. We're often faced with the situation of doing things that we know hurt us but the full effects may not happen until somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we've always been pretty good at um, pushing off some of the hard choices and difficult mm -hmm. choices. But as a country, when it does reach that crisis point, we've also always been very good about pulling together uh, and, um, you know, really doing everything it takes to address the the problem and i really think we are at a crisis mode now mm -hmm. um, well if you look at if, if you look at uh, fortune 500 companies now um each one of them has a, a chief sustainability officer right, right. that wasn't true 10 years ago people no. didn't even know what that was right. you got a, a, yeah. a chief sustainability yeah. officer yeah. is he the first one yeah uh he may be at the county uh, we worked together in babylon uh -huh. years. Yeah, so when I was Babylon Town Supervisor and he came over with me. Yeah, Dorian Dale. Yeah. yeah, we've been working on sustainability for uh, a lot of years because I, I truly do believe, you know, my job is to try to put this county, this region in the best position possible into the future. I, you know, I have three mm -hmm. young kids. That's what I'm focused on. And I'm focused on everyone's kids, you know, um, creating a, a more prosperous future. In order to do that, You've, you've got to be thinking about sustainability. And I think the regions in this global economy um, where we're, we're straining and putting pressure on resources throughout the globe, uh, the places that get this right and that get sustainability right are going to be the most vibrant places, are going to be the places that attract the best talent. Um, you know, and we should be that place. I mean, because we have the ingredients we have that we start with mm -hmm. Are absolutely phenomenal. So that's the place I want us to be. And here we are, one of the ingredients, <laughs> the, the, the Great South Bay. The, uh, this is this is our wealth. This is this is our heritage. Every time I cross that bridge, the uh, Rob Moses Bridge, that's behind us, and going over to those barrier beaches and mm. crossing the bay, um, you know, I think what a magical place mm. this is. You know, people. People travel, <laughs> go on vacations to places like this, and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just minutes from our, mm -hmm. our homes. We get to enjoy it uh, throughout the, the, the summer and, and during the year. It's amazing. Well, I, I grew up uh, clamming, you know, uh -huh. um, high school, summers, uh, college, 
Um, I'm sure you were out there as well. Yeah, we were out in the bay, uh, but uh, you know the clamming industry is a is a good uh, example. You know, both recreational clammers and mm -hmm. and professional. You know, we used to have six thousand mm -hmm. out there. That, that, Half of all the hard shell clams eaten in the country, right here, right yeah, yeah. in the Great South Bay, and you know that whole industry wiped out. You know that. That heritage, uh, you know. However, however, uh, I, I am very hopeful, as you yes. know, uh, about oysters. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, um, Blue Island oysters, working yeah. closely with them uh, locally in Sayville, uh, local moratorium on the pesticides and fertilizers on the lawns, um, uh, Great Atlantic Shellfish Farms. Yeah. Uh, an acre of oysters can generate $100,000 of revenue plus. Right. What would 5,000 acres do, right? And there are places right off a of Heckscher and such that could potentially be reopened if the water were to uh, improve enough, which is why we were pushing so hard for the, uh, the sewering in our, in our area. No question. You know, what we have seen time and again is that when you remediate the pollution, you know, natural ecosystems will restore themselves. You know, they, you know, they regenerate themselves. They come back. But you've got to take the pollution out. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you're just pouring more in, then, you know, and we've done that. We, you know, we, we're continuing to pollute, but at the same time, we're trying to seed the bay. Well, right. you know, th that doesn't work. You know, mm -hmm. the same thing that, you know, killed the clams and mm -hmm. killed oysters, you know, is still there and in fact it's worse you know so mm. you've got to be remediating the pollution and that's mm. what these solutions are about mm -hmm. and what we could do to uh, restore some of that uh, industry mm -hmm. and that heritage uh, mm -hmm. of ours I think is the, the the sky's the limit on that. You've been out to the breach at all? Oh yeah sure I've been out. It's uh, so beautiful. Out there, yeah. Yeah, yeah in uh, in the southern part of Bellport Bay in particular it's just it's just stunning. I think it shows us what we had yeah. and, and what we can have again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many different things that contribute to this issue. Certainly, nitrogen is um, you know at the tops, and you know we need to attack all of these areas. Mm -hmm. you know, priority basis. What what's the biggest bang for our buck? Mm -hmm. you know, that's what we did when uh, we worked with Governor Cuomo, and we were able to secure nearly 400 million dollars uh, in. Uh, water quality infrastructure to sewer around these four river corridors on the mm. on the south mm. shore yeah. you know and that would take out i believe 15 uh, percent of the nitrogen excess nitrogen going into the bay yeah uh, in the uh, great south bay yeah uh, really incredible numbers and that's uh, the calls river the kenequa river patch river and uh, uh in mastic mm. uh, so yeah we're, we're eager to to break ground on that. Yes, yeah. We're, <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's it's complicated, I'm sure, because it's not just that you have to, uh, uh, you know, sue around those areas. That you have to plan the infrastructure behind that as well. That's right. Yeah, it's um, you know, uh, plants and pump stations and mm -hmm. and all that's going to be sited and designed and and um, you know processes review processes have to be completed. So yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into it. it's not as simple you know you just start digging so, mm -hmm. but that's the importance of of doing design work you know mm -hmm. and getting those designs done which is why we're moving forward with those other projects now we want to be ready to be able to move mm -hmm. um i'm obsessed with electric cars mm -hmm. <laughs> especially <laughs> since uh suffolk uh for 15 years running has gotten an f for its air quality mm -hmm. and so um how do you what role do you see uh electric vehicles play you know Ten years from now, what, what's something going to look like? I, you know, I think we have a revolution going on uh, in uh, automobiles now. For, you know, for a hundred years we had the same uh, technology, and and now things are fundamentally uh, changing. So I think electric cars are potentially going to play a huge role uh, here. Uh, we're also um, very focused on uh, public transportation mm -hmm. and how we. Um, you know, get people, particularly young people, who are not only um, willing to use public transportation, they're inclined to, mm -hmm. how we get them out of their cars and, and uh, uh, utilizing public transportation, which is, 
you know, several things that, that go into that. So I think that the transportation aspect, very important to a clean energy future, and I think electric vehicles uh, are going to play a large role mm. in that. Um, and But there's, there's a lot of, this is an exciting time because there's so much um, innovation and change happening right now. Mm -hmm. And governmentally, you know, you you step back a little bit and see, okay, what is the um, right approach? What is the right way to go in terms of the new technology that's being developed? A big challenge is how do we go from sprawl to walkable communities? Yeah, which is uh, very important. Um, you know, we've developed a plan called Connect Long Island, which uh, I started when I was Babylon Town Supervisor. And basically was, what it says is that we need to create a series of really vibrant downtowns that are filled with um, great jobs, innovation jobs, and really well connected to one another by great public transportation, and also connected to our uh, job centers, our research centers, our, our parks and open space basically build out an ecosystem that is attractive to the people that we need to to retain and bring to our region young high knowledge high skill uh, workers we do that we will also attract the the businesses that we need to create high paying jobs look we are a high cost area <laughs> you know what we do have is incredible innovation assets natural resources proximity to the largest most vibrant city in the nation arguably the world so we have incredible assets, but um, we've got to deliver what young people are looking for. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we will help create a more sustainable uh, economy, create high paying jobs, and pull people off the roads, pull cars off the roads, which we desperately it. need mm -hmm. to do. Anyone who drives on any of our roadways who tells you we can, you know, simply keep going business as usual, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> when they, when the, um, really when, the attention. when the traffic uh, jam started at exit 60 uh, going into the yeah. city, you know, you got an issue. Exactly, exactly. So we, we can't follow the same models we have before. And the great thing is we have, again, the infrastructure in place. We have the Long Island Railroad. We have three lines that are already built out. You know, they were incredibly innovative when they were built back in the 1800s, mm -hmm. you know, but we largely haven't built upon them in any significant way to create uh, economic prosperity. So we want to create north-south rapid transit systems oh. uh, that will now connect all three lines of the railroad. So now if you live in a, a great downtown, you have new housing in a downtown, you're, you're supporting those small businesses by building that housing in and around the downtown. People can now live where they work as well. They can hop from one downtown to another without having to get into a car. And if you have rapid transit systems north south, mm -hmm. and we've identified in, in what in what form uh, buses, uh, or? dedicated lanes with uh, rapid uh, uh, transit buses. I see. Um, you know, we think of them not your traditional uh, bus that you think of here on Long Island. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's more like uh, Starbucks on wheels. Uh, you know, think oh. of people with laptops working. You know, oh, wow. college students and uh, uh -huh. you know uh, people who. Are, taking that system because it makes sense for them. Hmm. Um, you know, right now, the system we have in place is, is for people who largely uh, don't have an alternative. That, mm. that, because you can't utilize the system and easily move around this island because of the way the infrastructure is set up. So, mm. you know, we create these vibrant downtowns. And look, we have examples of these downtowns already. Mm. You know, uh, Sava, Babylon Village, uh, mm -hmm. Port Jefferson, Huntington, mm -hmm. you know, we've got, uh, you know, Bayshore, Patchog, which is mm -hmm. revitalized incredibly under the leadership of Mayor Paul Pontera, Mon Pontieri. These are great downtowns that were built all before World War II. Mm -hmm. When we built our communities at the center, at the core, around transportation, around mm -hmm. uh, train stations, and built the housing around mm -hmm. it. So we had mm -hmm. a core. All the communities built primarily post-World War II, completely different. Suburban sprawl, um, basically large housing subdivisions that every once in a while are intercepted by commercial corridors filled with gas stations, mm -hmm. uh, um, fast food restaurants, and strip malls. Um, so now the question is, how do we retrofit the region in a way that is attractive to the people we need here, the young people we need here, 
and that will help uh, create a more sustainable future. And that is building around those downtowns and creating the kind of vibrant mm -hmm. downtowns we see in our legacy downtowns like mm -hmm. Babylon Village and, and mm -hmm. Sayville. Yeah, um, apartments uh, above the storefronts for the young and the carless or the, uh, uh, the, the empty nesters. Uh, Traditional downtowns. Yeah, this exactly. This is the way <laughs> you know, downtowns were, were, were built before, the heart of mm -hmm. a community. And the great thing about it is, you know, everybody benefits from living in a community that has a core downtown mm -hmm. of commercial uh, and residential and, and places where you can work. You can work, you can recreate, you can, you know, go to a restaurant, you have entertainment, um, and, um, you know, you can also, because you have uh, transportation there, you can also easily get into the, to the city. Um, people benefit from having that, and it's a great quality of life, you know, to have a quaint downtown, yeah. to have a, a beautiful downtown that you can go to. Uh, I'd like to suggest uh, having uh, electric car depots uh, in, the, in the parking lots of every train station. Yeah, yeah. You know, sp for, Ford, speak to Ford. Right, yeah, right, right. Because they, they're looking at this whole model where uh, car ownership will disappear yeah. in favor of uh, subscription. I think um, when we were in Babylon, we put the first electric uh, car charging stations uh, in, of, uh, of any municipality in uh, a number of our, our parks and uh, locations at Town Hall, at Phelps Lane Park. We put uh, a number in there, still, still there, still uh, working. There weren't many, <laughs> there weren't that many cars uh, <laughs> utilizing now, but they, they're really being utilized now. And uh, yeah, we need to, we need to put the infrastructure in similar to water quality, we need to, to put the transportation infrastructure in to make alternative modes of transportation and alternative uh, types of um, transportation available. You know, we're working on creating a interconnected hiking and biking network throughout mm. the entire county. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the blue trail? Uh. Yeah, blue trail, but, but taking all the existing trail networks and all the parks and open space we have and figuring out how we effectively connect this all mm -hmm. so that people can move around the region mm -hmm. safely uh, by bicycle and c can get to parks and open space by bicycle. Mm -hmm. When we talk about those rapid transit systems, we're also talking about turning those corridors into multimodal corridors. So not only the car, not only rapid buses, but also hiking and biking networks along the, the whole corridor. So you can move, for example, Nichols Road you can move from the North Shore by Stony Brook University and, and the hospital all the way down to Patchogue mm. Village in the downtown uh, there. So making all of those connections I think are really important. Mm. Uh, there's another whole class of corridors that, that I think needs to be addressed, namely our creeks. Mm. We have some uh, 31 different creeks going into uh, the bay and uh, they are uh, seriously impaired. Yeah. Uh, lots of uh, uh, trash, um, you know, lot, lots of things seeping into, uh, into them via the, the groundwater. Um, our organization, we have uh, some 10,000 people uh, along the South Shore, um, organizing local creek uh, cleanups. And because because if, we, if, if, we, if we get that right, uh, then that's only going to help the bay and, and, the, and the surrounding communities. I just wanted to, you to address that as well. Yeah, I mean, we haven't had a lot of focus on that, but I think you're exactly right. Um, you know, when you're, you know, when we, you're dealing with problems in the billions and trying to get uh, major systems going, it's, uh, you know, easy to sometimes not look at, um, you know, something that's smaller, but so important like mm -hmm. those those creeks and i think each part of this um system each part of the ecosystem is is vitally important and i i love that uh that that attention is being paid and you guys are doing that we certainly want to work with you on that uh, well so is there anything that you'd like to uh discuss that uh, we haven't covered yet well I, you know i think that our focus is on creating a more sustainable future here in Suffolk County, here on Long Island. That means a lot of different things. It means protecting and reversing the decline we've seen in our water quality. Uh, it means creating sustainable, walkable uh, downtowns and communities where we can create jobs uh, that are uh, able to sustain people and sustain families here in our region, and and then gives us the resources we need to invest in what's important here. 
uh, to protect what's important mm -hmm. here. One last question. Yeah. Earth Day, uh, April 22nd. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Great South Bay uh, Road Race uh, will be the first year of that uh, in, in Sable. Uh, would you compete? I Sure, I'd <laughs> love to be there. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. And I'd say Dorian, we mentioned Dorian earlier. He uh -huh. was on the original Earth Day committee mm -hmm. uh, back then. He still has some of those original Earth Day buttons that he likes to, to hand out. So I'll make sure he comes along. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Marsha. Great to be with you. Likewise. That was my interview with Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone, taped last week at the Babylon Yacht Club. If you'd like to be notified about upcoming Water Matter shows, please like us on our Facebook page, Jump In Long Island. I hope you'll tune in again in a few weeks for another edition of the show, because here on Long Island, water matters. I'm Marshall Brown. Thanks for watching.